So, you probably can't tell, maybe you can, but it's come to this. I'm now exercising because I'm so venal about my pudgy appearance. So vain. So just disgusted with myself. Uh, both because I care that people are saying I'm pudgy, and two, more importantly, that I might actually be pudgy. I already had body dysmorphia. I already thought of myself as borderline obese. And now, now I'm, now look at this, Ugh, I'm exercising like a goddamn asshole. I thought, for, I, I turned 40 in two days. Two days uh, to enjoy the, the, the wreckage of my 30s. And I thought that my body would start to fall apart at the age of 40. I thought that's when the hair falls out, that's when I start gaining obscene amounts of weight, that's when I start, start getting bursitis of the elbow. It's not fair to me that I didn't even get all of my 30s. Like, there were, like I had a couple weeks left, you know? I had a couple weeks of pita chips and ice cream, and now that's just been taken away from me. Because I had this stupid special where I was pudgy, and and because my elbow was falling apart, and you know because people say mean things on the internet. Not that I read every single thing that's said about me on the internet, but I do read every single mean thing that's said about me on the internet. So what I'm my new hope for forty isn't so much that my body stays together, but that I just I literally I just stop caring. That I just it it I, that all this vanity, all this insanity, just uh, falls away like old snake skin, and that I am left in my shiny snake, pudgy body. I want to look like a snake that's just eaten a puppy, you know, just contented and fat and bald. Now my hair is not in terrible shape, but you know. I, I, I turn 40 in two days, and then I assume the day after my 40th birthday, I wake up bald. That's what I assume happens. Jill, I understand your anxiety, your career anxiety, the feeling of not having accomplished anything. I, I get that. I experience that every day of the week. That is the essence of sad, sad conversation. So you are not the thing that doesn't belong. You are the thing maybe the only thing that does belong. And Phil, Lamar, I love that you're doing mundane activities. I love that you almost admitted that you were sad. You came this close to admitting that you're depressed. Because I know you're depressed. The rage that's in you is just barely contained. And underneath that rage, sadness. And if we could just tap that, like a fine root beer, we'd really have something. I know we'd have something. Josh, I prefer you glowy. I've always preferred you glowy. You know that. That's why I loved you so much when you were pregnant. Thank you again for the kind words about my special. I definitely empathize with the nervous stomach idea. I get that when I watch friends doing things. Uh, people I care about when they're, when, they're, when they're doing things. It's funny, I mean, it's almost a parental thing. You know, you get far more nervous for your kids than you, than you ever get for yourself. And, and that's how I feel when I watch Friends. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm glad that it inspires you, not me, but, you know, that, that feeling I, uh, uh, of, of seeing your friends. I'm glad that it inspires you and doesn't cause severe resentment, which is what it generally does for me. But the thing that always drives me crazy about you, Josh, is that you are... Uh, one of the most talented people I know, eminently capable of doing whatever you set your mind to, and yet, uh, you know, there you are, playing the recorder with your nose or whatever the fuck you're doing. So here's my advice to you. Either join the goddamn circus, which you would also be excellent at, or sit down and write something grand. 